This is the Oxbeam Switch Panel Kit. This kit is a very clean and convenient way to control your aftermarket lights, horns, and other accessories. In this video, I will show you everything that is included with the kit, how to assemble and connect all wires and lights, as well as address specific functions and controls of this very well put together system. There are several models available. This one is the Oxbeam 8 Gang or 8 Switch BA80 package. I will put a link to this particular kit in the description below. Let's open the box and lay everything out. These are all the components that are in the box. We have the switch panel, the control box, we have a 60 amp circuit breaker, all the necessary wires and cables, there are mounting brackets, both for the switch panel and the control box. The necessary bolts and screws. Phillips head screwdriver. Zip ties. And then we also have a variety of the button stickers to customize the switch panel. After previously purchasing a separate fuse block, relays, and switches to run my light bar, ditch lights, and future components, I switched gears and decided that this kit was a much better and cleaner setup. I will put this kit together and hopefully you will see why. This is the control box and the heart of the kit. This has eight separate circuits that are individually fused and have built-in relays. These two terminals are where you connect the positive and negative cables. This eliminates the need for externally mounted relays. This box will be mounted in the engine compartment and in most cases near the battery. The switch panel here is what talks to the control box. Pressing a button on the switch panel will allow it to talk to the control box and tell it to send power to the light or component that you want to turn off or on. This will be mounted in the vehicle. Let me show you how to connect all these components together and how the system operates. I will also be doing a separate video very soon on the actual install in my 4Runner, so please stay tuned for that. We want to run power from the battery to the control box. This will be done by going through the circuit breaker. If we remove the cover, there are two terminals. We will connect the short red cable to this terminal and we will connect the longer red cable to this terminal. Let's do that now. We will leave the circuit in the off position as not to run power through just yet. In the end, we will flip it on and have the power go through. The circuit breaker will be mounted close to the battery and also be reasonably close to the control box. The black cable will be your ground connected from this terminal in the control box to the battery or a good chassis ground. This longer harness with the four pins will plug in here in the control box. The other end will thread into the switch panel. This wire is used for powering up the system when the ignition is in the on position. We will push one side of this pin into the control box. 
The other side will attach to a switched power source. We will do that using this fused jumper cable that is included. For this video, I will attach it to a constant power source to show how the system powers up. Each circuit in the control box is fuse protected and corresponds to a button on the switch panel. This is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There are two 5 amp fuses, two 10 amp fuses, two 20 amp, and two 30 amp fuses. Those numbers will correspond with the switch panel. The switch panels are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You will need to know what your power draw of the components have so you know what fuse circuit to connect it to. If the circuit is overloaded and the fuse is blown, a red light located here will illuminate in the control box. I will show an example of that in a moment. Let's connect this red wire to our power source. And because it's constant power now, this switch panel should illuminate. So we have the back illuminated, and if we press a button, you'll see the red light come on, and that will correspond with the number here in the control box. There is a sensor located here. It measures the amount of light coming in and will dim the backlights of the buttons accordingly. Let's connect some lights. We're going to connect the red wire to the positive terminal. We're going to connect the black wire to the negative terminal. Now, this circuit will correspond with this button. So this is number eight on the switch panel, and this is number eight on the control box. That is a five amp fused circuit. Let's put the master circuit back on to get power. We have power. I will now press the number eight button. Hopefully I don't blind you if that light turns on. On. Off. Let's go ahead and connect a second light. For safety, I will flip the power off on the master circuit breaker. The second light is now connected on circuit number seven. And this time, I'm going to face the lights backwards I realized that when I flipped the first light on, circuit number eight, it might have been blinding. So let's flip eight and seven back so it's not directly in the camera. And I already have the circuit breaker back on, so we will flip number eight on. We will flip number seven on. So both are working. Seven, eight. This button in the center is the off on button. When you have accessories that are on simultaneously and press this button, it will turn all those accessories off. So we have two lights on and I press this button. Both lights are off. Also, when pressing the button again, all accessories that were on will go back on. So both lights on and off. After turning them off, you can now light each one individually again. Obviously, when we're using ditch lights, we want them to turn on at the same time when we have them in our vehicle. So I will wire them together on one circuit when I install this in the vehicle. I did them individually here just to demonstrate how everything works. If a circuit was overloaded and the fuse were to blow, a red light would illuminate. I will show you. I pulled the fuse on this circuit and I will press the button and you can see the red light is indicating that there is a break in the circuit. I also wanted to show that underneath the cover of the control box are additional fuses as well as a fuse puller. The Oxbeam switch panel kit is a well put together 
and all-inclusive system. I hope I was able to demonstrate how all of this works. Please subscribe so you don't miss the install of this kit in my Forerunner. I appreciate you watching and I hope this video was helpful. Leave a comment or ask a question below. I do respond to all comments in all of my videos. The information for this kit will also be listed below. Thank you for watching. Thank you.